Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're going to be going over Jamal Adams' film, and we're determining why he's a top 10 NFL safety and where he can improve moving forward. Before we get started, please drop a like and a sub on today's video. I'd really appreciate it. And with that said, let's dive right into the video, and I hope you enjoy. So when I do these film analysis videos, the first thing I always talk about is the stats. So in 2020, Jamal Adams played in 12 games. It was a Pro Bowl season for him. Um, and in that time frame, he had nine and a half sacks, which is the NFL record for sacks by a safety. Also, he had a forced fumble, and he earned a 64.2 PFF player grade. So overall, a pretty good season for Jamal Adams, yet there were definitely some areas where he could improve. Now let's dive right into the film analysis. So in these film analysis videos, I always show you the good before the ugly. And the first thing I want to show you is Jamal Adams' instinct. So I'm going to roll the play here for a second and just watch Jamal Adams, who's right there. Okay? So Jamal Adams, right, He re he's just basically reading the eyes of the quarterback. He understands, right, as the pressure collapses, right, as the pocket collapses, um, and Dwayne Haskins is kind of, you know, he's, he's under pressure, he's under duress. Adams is reading that. He's looking at that. He understands what's happening in, in the pocket. And then look at this ability right here to just chase down Dwayne Haskins like DK Metcalf chased down Buda Baker. I mean, that is absolutely fantastic play there by a guy like Jamal Adams. Um, and overall, like, this is a huge play. As you can see, I mean, Jamal Adams isn't even in the picture over here. He's somewhere over here. Um, and as you can see, right, as Dwayne Haskins is able to get outside the pocket, you'll be able to see Jamal Adams, who's right here now, just absolutely come across the field and chase down Dwayne Haskins. And this is a great play. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic job by Jamal Adams. His pure instinct on this play, um, as you can see once again, I mean, is off the charts. You don't see safeties be able to have sideline to sideline speed like this um, and yet have the tackling ability of a linebacker. So overall, this just shows Jamal Adams' instinct here. And of course, instinct and a nose for the ball is essential, especially when you're a box safety. I mean, Jamal Adams is basically a linebacker playing safety. Um, and as you can see, he gets a strip sack here on Jared Goff. And this is all about instinct when it comes to Jamal Adams and what he's able to do here. So as he comes off the edge, as you can see Jamal Adams come off the edge, he kind of surprises the offensive line. I think that's a tight end blocking right there. Um, and basically, he's able to come around, bend, and then get behind the quarterback, and then have the awareness and the instinct to strip that ball. Go down on Jared Goff's arms, get that ball loose, um, and then end up, you know, that works out for the Seahawks. They pick up the fumble. But this is just a great job by Jamal Adams to just swat at Jared Goff, get that ball out, um, and not, you know, yeah, he goes for the sack. Too. I mean, he ends up getting a sack on this play, obviously. Uh, but, I mean, this is a great job here getting the turnover. And that's something that Jamal Adams didn't really do enough of in Seattle. I mean, he obviously has hard hits. He obviously gets to the quarterback. Obviously, you know, sacks the quarterback. Obviously, he gets a forced fumble here. But overall, he did not get enough uh, uh, turnovers. I mean, he didn't really get interceptions. So seeing him be able to get to the quarterback and have the instinct and ball awareness and, and just, you know, have that nose for the ball to just, you know, get to the quarterback and slap at that arm. Really good job here by Jamal Adams. And for Jamal Adams, it's all about instincts. And I've, I've been keeping on saying that. I mean, obviously the first play where he sacked Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Haskins, that's a huge instinct play. Uh, when he gets to the quarterback, Jared Goff, that's a big instinct play. Um, but overall, his instincts um, and his ball skills and his ability to just get to the ball um, is like a, it's like a linebacker. I mean, it's like a, a Luke Keekley or, or a Jalen Smith, guys who have noses for the ball. Um, but overall, I mean, Watching Jamal Adams is just really fun, and I'll show you here. This is a chase down sack on Cam Newton. He's one of the more mobile quarterbacks. So as you can see, Jamal Adams is going to be over here, and he's going to come down and go for a safety blitz, basically. Um, so he's going to go rush the quarterback here. And as you see, he comes to rush pretty much unblocked. He has this little hesitation step here, which is actually really nice to see from him. As like, if I can just go backwards, yeah, perfect here. You see, he kind of just stops here, lets uh, the other defender take the blocker, so he can come off the edge. And as you can see, that's going to what's going to happen right? You see now that the blocker, he's going to have a free rusher, and now Cam Newton feels the pressure, so he has to go outside. But Jamal Adams has the speed and the athleticism to make that run, too, to make that run with Cam Newton and go after Cam Newton. Now you see he has that chase down, uh, chase down ability to really go out there and get the quarterback and trip Cam Newton up, right? And this is a big play, right? I mean, this is, this is not a not, not a small play. You see, as he comes around um, and, and gets to the quarterback here, he's able to chase down. Having that chase down ability from a safety position, especially when you're a box safety and you're trying to get after running backs and you're trying to get after quarterbacks, this is a huge tool. And he had a similar play like this 
um, against uh, Carson Wentz. He had a similar play uh, like this, not against a quarterback, but Darrell Henderson when, when he came across the edge and actually went all the way around against the Rams to stop a touchdown. But I mean, his ability, just his 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 speed um, and his ability to just chase after the ball and just have that nose and that instinct for the ball is something that you really like to see for uh, defenders, especially really all pro and pro bowl caliber defenders. I mean, that's, that's one of the big skill sets he has. He wants the ball and he goes out and gets it. The next play I want to show you is all about his speed off the edge. So this is actually going to be Jamal Adams lining up right here. As you can see, he's going to be involved on the sack. He's going to be able to get to the quarterback, bend around the offensive uh, tackle, and just get to Jamal Adams, I mean, get to Josh Allen and just sack him. So this is going to be a better angle of it right here. But basically, the big thing with Jamal Adams that we don't really see from other safeties is his ability to get to the quarterback and sack the quarterback. I mean, this guy had nine and a half sacks um, as... Uh, a member of the Seattle Seahawks last year in his first season with the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, his career high before them was six and a half with the Jets in 2019. But the big thing with Jamal Adams is he has the speed off the edge to get to the quarterback. So this is Jamal Adams here. And basically, as he tries to get to the quarterback, he, he has the bend ability um, and the speed and the bend uh, to get around the offensive lineman. And as you can see, um, as we just progress here, if I can progress, perfect. You see him just make this little move where he just lowers his shoulder and bends around the offensive off lineman. I mean, we don't see we don't see guys. I mean, this is going to be just here, just to show you here. We don't really see guys like that, especially at, as a safety. I mean, there's defensive ends and edge rushers who do this, but I mean, he's doing this like he's T.J. Watt. Um, he just he literally just puts his shoulder down and runs right by the offensive tackle, and then has the ability to just jump on uh, Josh Allen. So I mean, uh, Josh Allen, yeah. So like, this is a great job by Jamal Adams, just having that you know the savviness. Um, especially in in uh, in rushing the quarterback. I mean, this, you don't see safeties be able to rush the quarterback like uh, Jamal Adams can. And as you can see, he's just able to be so aggressive and so powerful at getting to the quarterback uh, that he's really hard to stop. I mean, he just puts his shoulder down and runs right by the offensive tackle um, and then, you know, just sacks the quarterback. That's that's a huge asset for especially a Seattle Seahawks team that doesn't have a great pass rusher. And they've got uh, Duran Reed. They've got Carlos Dunlap. Uh, um, in 2020. Uh, they had Benson Iowa, uh, but Jamal Adams led the team in sacks, and his ability to come off the edge and make plays like this, where he could just get to the quarterback, um, was the reason that this defense became elite in the last few weeks. Uh, so with that said, that's a huge part of Jamal Adams' game. Also, when we're talking about safeties and linebackers and defenders, we talk about sideline-to-sideline -side speed, and Jamal Adams has elite sideline-to-sideline -side speed. So this is him in this situation. And I already kind of showed you his elite sideline to sideline speed um, with that play against uh, Dwayne Haskins. But that's Jamal Adams right there. And as this play develops, right, he is so good at diagnosing where the ball is going. And he sees that now this guy's the ball, so he's going to run right downhill. You know, when I talk about running downhill, I'm talking about Derek Henry. I'm talking about guys who like to go from 0 to 100 real fast. But Jamal Adams is one of those guys. I mean, he just runs downhill as a defender. Um, he goes straight to the football. His instinct for the football is off the charts. As I keep on saying, I mean, that's something that I've really hinted at and really talked about a lot in today's video. But he's got the sideline to sideline speed here to run after uh, the offense, the offensive weapon, and then just make that make that play. I mean, this is a hard play to make. Um, you're going to your right, then you have to go downhill, and you got to uh, trip up a pretty speedy guy. Um, I believe that's Calvin Ridley there. And so overall, I mean, this is a great play. Um, he, as you can see, he's basically playing linebacker in the situation. So he's a safety that plays linebacker, plays in the box a lot. Um, and he's able to play in the box because, one, he's very good at getting to the quarterback. Two, he has that sideline to sideline speed. And three, he's that innate ability to go and find the football and go and bring down uh, opposing offensive weapons. So this is a great job by Jamal Adams, really showcasing his speed, his athleticism, and his desire to get to the football. However, there are things that Jamal Adams can work on. I mean, he's not perfect. Uh, so as you can see here, this is going to be Jamal Adams right here. Um, he's playing that traditional safety role in this situation. And as Sam Darnold gets the ball um, in this situation, right, he's kind of just reading the eyes of Darnold. So as Darnold's looking over here, right, Adams is reading the eyes of Darnold, and he understands that he wants this receiver um, who's going to go on some sort of rep uh, that Adams can, you know, cut off. So as you can see the play develop, right, Adams is reading, reading Darnold. Right? He understands where the ball's going, and then he just steps in front of his pass. And really good job here. The ball wants to be thrown over, over the head, uh, but Adams has the ability to go up and make a play on that football. He doesn't end up bringing the football in. Right, He drops this football. But the good things from Adams here in this situation 
is that he knows where uh, Darnold wants to go with the ball, and he makes a play on that football. That's Those are good coverage skills. That's good coverage skills, right? Um, th those are really, really, really good coverage skills. I actually think he wanted to go to this receiver, Braxton Berrios, not the receiver over. But you see, he does a great job at the last second, just looking and turning to see where Darnold is and making a play on that football. Good coverage skills, good understanding what the what the quarterback wants to do in the situation, but overall he can't make the play. Okay, so this is a this is one of those situations where it's like, okay, good job, you know, understanding what the what what, what you had to do. Good good job understanding what Sam Darnold wanted to do, but you got to bring this this football in. And if Tim, if if a guy like Jamal Adams was a was a was an elite safety, I mean, I consider him an elite box safety, but I don't know if he's an he's not an elite coverage safety. Um, he's pretty much a guy with. Uh, average to slightly maybe above average coverage skills with pretty not great hands. I mean, you can't. You, this is this ball's right into your. It's right into your pocket. I mean, you got you got to make a play on that football. You got to catch that football and, and get that turnover. Um, but overall, I mean, like he's he's got okay coverage skills. I mean, he's not terrible in coverage. Um, it's just he needs to make better plays. And I mean, this is this is a good play until he drops the football. And the truth is, I'm never going to call Jamal Adams a liability in coverage. But here. He's kind of a liability in the way that he's matched up against Cooper Cup. Okay, it's going to be one on one, basically one on one, one on one, one on one. Um, and basically, everyone is matched up one on one. Okay, uh, because of the way that the Rams have have spread the field. Right, they're going five wide, so that's going to make everyone have to play man coverage, spread the defense, and that leaves Jamal Adams on a very good receiver in Cooper Cup. Okay, so the situation basically calls for Cooper Cup running just a go route. Okay, and as you can see, he kind of ends up making a huge play on Jamal Adams. He's able to kind of just get the ball over him, which is not something you want from your all-pro, Pro Bowl caliber safety. So this is a really good uh, view of it here. And as you can see, Jamal Adams kind of just gets beat on the route. He just gets beat on the route. As I said, he doesn't have elite coverage skills. He probably has average to slightly above average uh, coverage skills. I mean, probably like a, maybe like a, let's say average of like a 5 out of 10. He probably has like a, a 6 out of 5.5 to 6 out of 10. But, I mean, he needs to probably make a better play on this football. I mean, he, he's in a good position here, right? He's right on, on Cooper Cup's hip. Um, the, the ball is a little bit underthrown, so he, he gets lucky there. But he, got, he, he can't just get manhandled like that by an undersized receiver like Cooper Cup. Obviously, Cooper Cup's a great receiver. Like, don't, don't get me wrong here. But as you can see, I mean, he just kind of gets manhandled. He can't, should probably be able to make a play on this football, just go straight up, rather than, you know, allowing for Cooper Cup to make that space. And, I mean, Cooper Cup's an elite uh, or a very, very good wide receiver. I don't know if he's elite, but he's very, very, very good. Um, and I mean, Jamal Adams just gets beaten here. He just does. And the, I'm not saying that he's not a liability. I mean, he's not a liability in coverage. Um, in this situation, he might be because he's one-on-one -on -one against one of the NFL's better rat runners and receivers. Uh, but overall, I mean, he's a really good football player. And it's his coverage skills that are lacking him for making him an elite safety and an elite football player that can really be a true difference maker in pass coverage and in stopping the run. So, I mean, overall, Jamal Adams is this guy where he can really get after the quarterback and he can really make a difference getting to the quarterback and, you know, stopping the run and having that sideline to sideline speed. But what he doesn't really have are those great coverage skills that we see um, great safeties have. Guys like Earl Thomas, uh, I mean, obviously former Seahawks safety, that's why that came to mind. But, I mean, there's some great safeties in the NFL that have great coverage skills. And there are some great safeties in the NFL that have great run blocking, I mean, uh, and, and run game skills that are able to stop the run really well. Um, I mean, Jamal Adams isn't Minka Fitzpatrick, um, but he's more of a of, of a Derwin James uh, guy who's better at getting to the quarterback in, in, in a way. I feel like that's a semi-okay comparison, but overall, he really needs to improve his coverage if he wants to become that elite safety. However, his coverage abilities are not the only thing that's stopping him from being an elite safety. There are also bonehead decisions and, and lack of effort at times that we see from Jamal Adams um, that makes him, you know, one of those borderline safeties uh, that is kind of on the borderline of that elite, you know, that elite potential. I mean, this guy's a Pro Bowl all pro caliber safety, but I don't know if he's elite in what in what he's able to do because he's not able to do everything on the football field. And this is one of those plays where he kind of just seems a little bit out of it. So this is pretty much going to be a run play to the right. And this is Jamal Adams over here, and he actually has a really good shot at this football. Um, as we can just show the play here, right? That's Jamal Adams. He plays a run play to the right. Jamal Adams looks like he's in a really good spot here. That's Jamal Adams. It looks like he could probably make a tackle, and he just he just doesn't really make a tackle. And I'll show you another angle of it um, in a second. So this is Jamal Adams. Play is going to come pretty much at him. And as you can see here, good job by the off the line uh, with the blocking here. 
But Jamal Adams looks like he's in a perfect spot to make a play on this football. I mean, he's going to come here. He's going to come here. It's going to be a tackle, right? There's other guys in the area that can help. Uh, there's other guys in the area that, that can help get to the uh, get to get to the runner in Malcolm Brown. But I mean, what is this? What what is that? What is that by Jamal Adams? That's like the that is the laziest tackle I've ever seen. Go for his legs, wrap him up. But I mean, he just kind of I don't know if 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 if, if the wide receiver Reynolds is interfering with him here, but he just kind of lowers his head and doesn't like move his like what is this? You got to see better tackling from a guy who I consider an elite tackler. I mean, I consider Jamal Adams an elite tackler, but this is just a lack of effort here. I mean, you got to go for go for Malcolm Brown. You got to give it your 100% if you want to be an elite NFL safety. Now, I'm saying that he's a very good safety. Don't get me wrong, but you got to put more effort into a play like this. You cannot give up a touchdown. And finally, as I hinted at earlier, he's a little bit of a bonehead. So in this in this case, this is Jamal Adams here, and this and and the quarterback John Walford is going to get outside the pocket. And as you can see, Jamal Adams. Um, sees that John Walford's kind of, you know, he's putting his head down. Um, he's, he's giving himself as a runner, but Adams continues to go in for the tackle, and as you can see, the flag um, is given up. So I just want to show you, this is probably a better angle here. So as you can see, Walford's pretty much going to the ground, and Adams is like, it's going to attack him, and this is this is when it comes to instinct, right? As I said, Joel Adams has elite instinct, and this is one of those situations where instinct takes over. You see um, a runner going to the ground, you think that you could probably get a fumble or a hard hit on him, and then you you end up injuring a quarterback. He ended up having to go to the hospital after this hit. But like this is just a boneheaded decision from a, a very good football player in Jamal Adams. You cannot make this play. Um, you cannot put your shoulder on someone's helmet. Um, you, and and you cannot lead with. I mean, it's not leading with his helmet, but he's very close to leading with his helmet in this situation. But he just makes some bonehead mistakes sometimes, and that's in his pursuit for the big play for the fumble. And I mean, I love to see Jamal Adams' instinct, and this is part of his instinct to get to the football and his desire to want the football. But he also makes some boneheaded mistakes, and this is one of those boneheaded mistakes where he ends up injuring someone. He sends them to the he sends them to the hospital, and I mean, in a way, he kind of makes the Seahawks lose this game in, in, in a way because Walford. I mean, with Walford in, I think the Seattle Seahawks would have probably won this game. But then Jared Goff comes in, and he's able to run the offense pretty well, um, and then they end up losing the game. So, I mean, overall, this is just a rough decision by Jamal Adams. I mean, he's trying to make a play in the football. He's trying to get a fumble, trying to get a hard hit, trying to get some momentum, and then he just ends up losing momentum by giving up that flag. So it's just a bonehead decision from Jamal Adams. I just don't love it from him in this situation. And with that said, I mean, that's, that's the last play I'm going to show you. I mean, Overall, the things that I love about Jamal Adams is his elite sideline to sideline speed, his instincts, um, his awareness for the ball, his knack for finding the football, his ability to get to the quarterback and have the awareness to you know strip sack the quarterback. Those are all things that make him a top 10 NFL safety. However, the things that are keeping him from being an elite safety are his coverage skills. He's got an he's got average coverage skills. You can't have an elite safety with average coverage skills. Um, he's got great speed, great athleticism. He wants the ball. But in a way, he's kind of like Bobby Wagner playing safety. He's a hard-hitting linebacker that's playing safety. He's like a Jalen Smith. Um, but overall, I like Jamal Adams a lot, and I really like what he brought to the Seattle Seahawks defense this, this season. He brought a real competitive spirit, a real competitive vibe that Seattle was missing on defense. And he, from Week 10 to Week 17, um, and even into the playoffs, made this defense elite. This defense was elite thanks to the contributions that Jamal Adams had. His ability to get to the quarterback, nine and a half sacks in the year, led the Seattle Seahawks, was the reason that Seattle had any defensive success all year. But to be a real elite safety, he needs to work on his coverage skills. He needs to work on his decision making. He made some boneheaded decisions like, you know, going for uh, John Walford in that situation, injuring him. Um, You can't do that. Also, lack of effort. Um, on Malcolm Brown, that touchdown run. Was it a lack of effort? Was it just a weird tackle? I mean, I don't know. He just needs to put his 100% effort in all the time um, and be that real leader that Seattle needs on that defense after Bobby Wagner. Um, And I just like to see him get better in coverage. I mean, he's not a complete liability in coverage, but overall, he's average in coverage um, to slightly above average in coverage. And overall, if you're an elite safety, you need to be good in coverage. That's probably your number one job um, other than, you know, seeing the seeing what's in front of you and, 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 and seeing the field and understanding what's on the field. Um, and Jamal Adams sees the field very well. His vision is great. And his instinct, football instinct, is what makes him a top 10 NFL safety. Um, his football instinct and his abilities um, combined are what make him a top 10 safety. I mean, his ability to get to the football, um, his ability uh, and his, his desire and his knack for finding the football and going after the football um, is something that makes him a great tackler and a great pass rusher um, and a great safety. But overall, he needs to improve his coverage skills if he wants to be an elite safety. And with that said, that's pretty much going to end the video for today. Did you agree with my analysis on Jamal Adams? Why or why not? Leave your comments in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. 
Also, if you're new around here, please drop a like and a sub on today's video. I'd really appreciate it. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, see ya.